आर यू रेडी टू टेक योर अजोर एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर स्किल्स टू द नेक्स्ट लेवल एंड पास द इजी वन ऑफ फोर एग्जाम लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड हाई एवरी वन एंड वेलकम टू टेक क्लाउड सोल्यूशन एंड टूडे वी आर डाइविंग इन टू सम ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट इजी वन ऑफ फोर एग्जाम क्वेश्चन टू हेल्प यू ईस योर सर्टिफिकेशन ऑन द फर्स्ट ट्राई these questions are designed to simulate the actual exam experience and cover key topics like azure identity governance compute storage and networking plus i will walk you through the answers and explain the reasoning behind them so you can learn effectively let's tackle these question step by step remember it's not just about knowing the answers but understanding the why behind it by the way if you want to practice more questions head over to our website tech cloud solution where you will find the full length practice test and detailed explanation question number 1 a team has enabled multi factor authentication for three users as shown below username multi factor authentication status so we have techcert lab user 1 2 3 for user 1 it is disabled for user 2 it is enforced and user 3 enabled a group has been created and all users have been added as a part of the group you create a conditional access policy which enforces the use of multi factor authentication for the group for all cloud based application would techcert lab user 2 be required to use multi factor authentication when signing into azure via the web browser and the options are true and false so the correct answer is true the different scenarios based on the user state is given in the microsoft documentation if the user state is in enforced state then the user will need to use mfa for the login process question number 2 so for this question the scenario is same and the question it says would techcert lab user 1 be required to use multi factor authentication when signing into azure via the web browser and the options are true and false so the correct answer is false so if the user is in the disabled state then the user will not be prompted for the mfa question number 3 a company has an azure subscription that contains the following resource group so we have techcert lab group a under east us and techcert lab group b under west us the following resources have been deployed to the subscription so it is given as name resource type and resource group so for the network interface we have techcert lab nic1 under resource group a then we have public ip address techcert lab ip1 under resource group a we have techcert lab network that is virtual network under resource group a then we have a storage account that is techcert lab store one under the resource group a the network interface is attached to a virtual machine that is located in the techcert lab network virtual network would you be able to move the storage account techcert lab store one to the resource group techcert lab group b and the options are true and false so the correct answer is true so since this is an isolated resource so it can be moved to the resource group question number 4 your company has an azure subscription that contains a log analytics workspace named staging workspace you have to get the error events from the table named event which of the following query would you run in the workspace so in the options the query is given under a b c d so for this question the correct query is d that is search in event error question number 
a development team has just launched an Azure Kubernetes cluster. They have images placed in an Azure container registry. They want to deploy an application onto the cluster using an image from the Azure container registry. Which of the following command could be used to fulfill this requirement? And the options are A. Easy Kubernetes deploy B. Kube CTL apply C. Docker run and D. Docker build So the correct answer is Kube CTL apply To deploy an application to the cluster you have to use the Kube CTL apply command Question number 6 A company has the following app service plans defined as part of their Azure subscription. Name, location and operating systems are given. So we have take set lab plan A under East US and the operating system is Linux. Then we have take set lab plan B under East US and that is Windows operating system. And the last one is plan C. Location is UK South and it's under Windows. The company is planning on deploying the following Azure web app instances. So name, location and runtime stack are given. Take set lab app 1 under East US and the runtime is .NET Core 3.1 and for the take set lab app 2 under East US location and runtime stack is ASP.NET v4.7. Which of the following app service plans can you use for Take Set Lab App 2? And the options are A. Take Set Lab Plan A only. B. Take Set Lab Plan B only. C. For Take Set Lab Plan A and Take Set Lab Plan B only. And E. Take Set Lab Plan A. Take Set Lab Plan B. And Take Set Lab Plan C. So the correct answer is B. Take set lab plan B only. So the web app and the app service plan needs to be located in the same region. You can deploy a .NET application on Windows OS only. Question number seven. So the scenario is same, and the question it says which of the following app service plans can you use for Take set lab app one? And the options are A. Take set lab plan A only. B. Take set lab plan B only. And C. Take set lab plan A and take set lab plan B only. And D. Take set lab plan B and take set lab plan C only. So the correct answer is C. That is take set lab plan A and take set lab plan B only. The reason is the web app and the app service plan needs to be located in the same region and you can deploy a .NET Core application on either a Windows OS or a Linux OS. Question number 8. A company is planning on deploying two Azure Kubernetes cluster. Each cluster has different requirements as given below. Cluster A. Here you have to ensure that the nodes get an IP addresses from the Azure Virtual Network subnet and the pods receive an IP address from a logically different address space. Cluster B. Here you have to ensure that every pod gets an IP address from the subnet and can be accessed directly. Which of the following needs to be used to fulfill the requirement for cluster B? And the options are A. Service Endpoint B. KubeNet C. Azure Container Network Interface and D. Network Security Group So for the cluster B, the requirement is that every pod gets an IP address from the subnet and can be accessed directly. So the correct answer is C.
so the AKS cluster can use the Azure Container Networking Interface. Question number nine. So this is also the scenario is same, but the question is says which of the following needs to be used to fulfill the requirement for cluster A and cluster A it says that you have to ensure that the nodes get an IP addresses from the Azure virtual network subnet and the pods receives an IP address from a logically different address space. The options are A service endpoint, B kubenet, C Azure container network interface and D network security group. So the correct answer is kubenet. Now if you come across the question where it has images, you can click the image to zoom out. Your company has an Azure storage account named TechCert Lab Store 8080 that has the following properties. The company wants to change the replication type of the storage account from read access geo redundant storage to zone redundant storage by requesting Azure support for a live migration. Which of the following must be carried out first to fulfill this requirement? The options are A. Ensure to change the performance of the storage account. B. Ensure to change the access tier of the storage account. C. Ensure to change the account kind of the storage account and D ensure to change the replication technique of the storage account. So the correct answer is D. So in the Microsoft documentation, it clearly states that the replication type of the storage account can be changed to join redundant storage only if the current replication technique is either LRS or GRS. Question number 11, your company has the following users defined as part of their Microsoft Intra ID tenant. The tenant is also synced with an on-premise Active Directory using Microsoft Intra ID Connect. So given as name, type and source. So we have TechCert Lab user 1 that is member and Microsoft Intra ID. Then we have TechCert Lab user 2. It is also a member under Windows Server Active Directory. Then we have TechCert Lab user 3 that is guest Microsoft account and TechCert Lab user 4 member under Windows Server Active Directory. The users have the following attributes name, office, phone, mobile phone. So for every users the information is given like TechCert Lab user 1, office phone is given, mobile phone is given for 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now you have to ensure multi-factor authentication is enabled for all users. You decide to create a new user account for TechCert Lab user 3 in Microsoft Intra ID. Would this fulfill the requirement? and the options are true and false. So the correct answer is true. Since MFA can't be enabled for external user accounts, if you try this out and invite an external users and then you go to the MFA settings page, you will not be able to select the users to enable MFA. Question number 12, the scenario is same and the question it says, you have to ensure multi-factor authentication is enabled for all users. You decide to add an office phone number for TechCert Lab user 2. Would this fulfill the requirement? And the options is true and false. The correct answer is false. So here the issue is that you can't enable multi-factor authentication for external user. There is no dependency as such on the phone numbers. If you try this out and invite an external user and then you go to the MFA settings space, you will not be able to select the users to enable MFA. Question number 13. 
the scenario is same and the question is you have to ensure multi-factor authentication is enabled for all users you decide to add a mobile phone number for TechCert Lab user 2 and TechCert Lab user 4 would this fulfill the requirement and the options is true and false so the correct answer is false so here the issue is that you can't enable multi-factor authentication for external users so here we end the first part of the video and we'll see you in next video happy learning